Hello everyone. Um, I make this video for the Coursera class Statistical Mechanics Algorithm Computations and I do this as a response to a few requests I saw on a forum where people are wondering about the Python code used in this class. So this is an attempt to explain a little bit um, about Python on the example of one of the homework assignments in week two. So the week two homework assignment um, asks you to run and modify this code here that is provided um, under section A1. Because I work on a Windows machine, I copy and pasted this code into an idle window with an idle shell um, so that I can um, just execute it easily and see the output right here. So, um, just if you're not familiar with Python, I just want to go through this, um, through this code line by line so that you understand what's happening here and maybe don't spend so much time Googling for syntax. So um, in Python, you usually see a line like this at the beginning where there's an import statement. Import simply tells Python to import all the functions that are contained in the class with a name named, named afterwards. So for example, here we import all the methods that are contained in the random and the PyLab class. And as the name suggests, the random one allows you to call functions that um, generate random numbers, and PyLab has just some laboratory things, for example, plotting um, methods available. When you want to access a function out of the class in Python, you will afterwards be able to access any function in the random, random class as such. You um, just type in random, then you type in a dot, and afterwards, you just give it a name of a function defined inside of that class. Now, the exact functions that are defined in a random class, that's something one has to look up, and I also don't bother with memorizing that. Um, but let's keep going. In the third line, you see a function definition. This is a function definition, and I can tell you that because it starts with def. The blue highlighted part here is the function name. And in the parentheses here are parameters that you pass into the function. Um, the function can always be seen as a box that gets an input in and spits you a result back. So in this case, here you define the things that you want your function to accept. And at the end, you have a return statement. This is what the function returns to the user. And in between, that is some magic. Um, in our case, we want to understand what's happening. Um, for example, here we call a function where we do not care what's happening. We just assume that the function knows what it's doing and will just give us a uniform value. But let us worry now about what's happening in these lines of code here. So the first thing that is done is there is a variable called overlap initialized um, with a value true. Now, passing a value of true into it kind of makes it a Boolean value. Now, overlap from now on always just is the same as saying true. Now, what you see here is a common trick. It's a so-called infinite while loop. It's a loop that is true. Uh, it's a loop that will run as long as overlap is true. And overlap will be kept true until a specific condition is hit. So a statement like this allows you to write a few lines of code that will be executed over and over and over again until you finally get a result that is desirable. Now, the first thing that happens here is a new variable called L is created. And you see these open and closing brackets here. They indicate that L is a list. Now, lists are a data type in Python that has um, a lot of nice features. For example, you can always append things to a list, which you will see a little bit later. Um, but now in here, you can see that there's a list that contains two elements. The first element is a random number that's uniformly pulled out of an interval from sigma to 1.0 minus sigma. Now, what is sigma? Well, sigma is a parameter you pass into the function here. And so to understand what sigma is, we got to look at where this function is actually called. 
which is further down here after its definition somewhere. And in this case, direct disk box is called right here. And in here, you pass in an N and a sigma. Now, this is a little bit confusing that these are the same names. They don't have to be. But N here is the number of disks in this example, four. And sigma is the radius of your disks. In this case, this floating value here. Now, um, passing this value for sigma in here puts it in here and makes it available here. And so this means in this call, you actually retrieve, a retrieve two numbers and plug them in a list. And both these numbers are uniformly distributed in between the value 0.1197 and 1 minus 0.997. Okay, now the next line is the so-called for loop. For loops are kind of similar to a while loop. The main difference is while a while loop runs until a specific condition is met, a for loop only runs a defined number of times. In this case, it means um, that there is a iteration variable k defined that will take up possible values from 1 to n minus 1. And so, for example, if n is 4, k will take the values 1, 2, and 3 and run through this loop. Now, in Python, it's common that you always run starting at this number and ending um, one number less than the end parameter in this range call here. Okay, so k takes all these values and then runs through these lines of code. And the first thing you can see here is pretty much the same thing as has been done here, just with the difference that a now is um, a tuple of two values. Yeah, that's the same randomly, uh, uniformly drawn um, values as up here, but A is not a list. A is just a tuple out of two numbers. And now the next line is a little bit more complicated because they use something like a um, list comprehension in here, which makes it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. So what they do in this line here is they compute the minimum difference of a value a that is chosen here and all the possible um, tuples that are already stored in L. Now when you go through this follow for the first time, um, the number, the list L just contains one value that was randomly drawn here. And now what you do in this line is kind of you create a list. This is done here. And then you pick the minimum out of that list. And now in this list, what's stored in there? In there is stored the difference between um, the A that has been drawn here and all the elements that are already stored in L. Now this is more complicated than it needs to be. So let's think about writing the same thing in a little bit better understandable way. So here's a different way of looking at it. Um, I wrote these lines of code that do exactly the same as one line of code here, but I consider them a lot more understandable. So don't worry about this. Let's talk about this now. At the end, you will get the same value from in this square. Um, the first thing we do is we say we want to have a distance list in which we want to save all the distances from A to the elements inside of L. And we just make this an empty list. Now we say, for each element in L, we do something. And what do we do? Well, we first calculate the distance from A to the element square, which is the same as the sum over the squares of the differences of the X positions and of the Y positions of the point A and the element. Um, now, I don't know if you have seen this before. This is how you index um, lists in Python. So A brackets open, zero brackets close, will retrieve the first entry inside of the list A. Um, now A is not a list, A is a tuple, but you can access it still the same way. So that's nice about Python. Everything is kind of possible the same way. I, I like that. Um, here, for example, A of zero will retrieve the number that was uniformly drawn here. And A of 1 gives you this number, representing the X and the Y 
values. Okay, so now you after you calculated the distance of A to this specific element, you append this distance to the distance list. Appending means just adding this element to the end of the list. So for the first element, this would be the for the first element in L, this would be the first element in the distance list. Now then for the second element in L, you would append a second value and so on. And now afterwards, you say my min dist square is just the smallest value inside of this distance list. And you get that smallest value by the inbuilt Python function min. So this just takes the smallest value out of this list and plugs it in here. Okay, so these five lines of easy understandable code do the same thing as this somewhat complicated but pretty elegant one-liner here. Um, maybe for a class like this it would be nicer to write these function a little bit um, more understandable, so to say, but that's only my opinion. Okay, what's happening afterwards? Well, here you see the first time an if statement. If statements just evaluate if, <laughs> if what is said after the if and before the colon is, uh, returns true. So you will always have a logical operator here that um, can be either an equal equal, which compares equality or smaller than or bigger than um, sign that will just compare something on the left of the operator to something on the right. In this case, it looks if the minimum distance square is smaller than four times the radius of the disk to the square. Um, so because this is the minimum distance to the square, this pretty much is is um, the square of two times the radius, which is defined as the minimum distance that two centers of um, disks have to have from each other without overlapping. And now, well, this value evaluates either to true or to false. In the case that this statement is true, then this here is executed. In the statement that this is false, it will not execute this block of code, but go down here, and here's an else statement. So kind of, if this is false, then it will do what's followed in this code block. And then what it does is, it changes this overlap variable. And we remember that we have this big while loop covering all these blocks of code. And this while loop will run until overlap is not anymore true. And what we can see here is if two um, disks overlapped, then overlap stays true and we do something that's called breaking out of the for loop. We say break here, and this means it doesn't matter what we have done so far, we totally break out of here and start the while loop over again. This is kind of the tabula rasa idea that if something overlaps, we just throw it away and we start from scratch. But in the case that the minimum distance is smaller um, than two radii, uh, than the distance of two radii, um, then we say, well, our overlap is false, and we picked an A that is not overlapping with any element yet contained in L. And so we append this new center point to L, and we say overlap is false, but this now will go into, uh, will, will finish this for loop, and now K will take the next value, and we'll do this again. And so maybe for K equals one, this will work, and you get into this loop here, and the second time, for k equals 2, you again get positively evaluated, but then if k equals 3, you may find that the third randomly drawn disk overlaps, and you go in here and it breaks, and then you have to start over again. But this is kind of the syntax of this function. Now the rest down here is pretty straightforward. You just define some values. Here you say often it should run. Um, here you define um, an empty list for histogram data, and down here, you just run for as often as you have declared here. And every time you run, you will create a, um, a list of positions with the direct disk box function. And then you say afterwards, well, I want to put all the x coordinates that I got from this function into my histogram. And these down here are inbuilt functions that will then just draw this histogram for you. Well, I hope this helped someone.
Have a good time, a good weekend. Bye.